Hello, my name is Dr. Preston. I can't say I'm a doctor. Are you sure? I have a stethoscope. My name is Preston, and I am here to perform surgery today on Johnny. Johnny here has scupidopodopolupidus. I said it. He needs immediate surgery. There's no one better qualified than me. Doc, just Preston, Preston. So what we're gonna do is my assistant here, Steve, is going to try and throw me off my game. I'm too good at operation. I'm too good at surgery. I'm too good at saving Johnny's life. So he's going to try and distract me by any means necessary. If he succeeds in distracting me from my very important surgery, then he gets to Steve slam me. Don't worry about what Steve slam is. You'll never see it. Ready? Let's get started. While I'm doing this surgery, I need to tell you about the story of Mark chapter two. In Mark chapter one, we saw some pretty crazy stuff that a guy named Jesus did. Jesus pops into the world and he tells everyone, hey, I'm the son of God. Let me tell you, didn't go over super well. Now, when Jesus is walking around telling everyone he's the son of God, he's walking around teaching, healing people. At some point he heals a people in a crowd and also pushes out evil spirits from the same people. Yeah, pretty nuts. All of a sudden, Jesus says, hey, I need some disciples. These disciples are people that would follow Jesus for the rest of his life, and he focuses on them and pours into them for the rest of the time that he's on earth. And that takes us to Mark chapter two. Jesus has been walking around, healing people, teaching people with his disciples, and in Mark chapter two, what was that? It's time for immediate surgery. One moment, please. I'm ready for the extraction. Keep it down a little. <laughs> I can't grab it. Does that mean I fail? Time for a Steve slam, I guess. Simply a fluke. None of it matters. My eardrum will recover at one point. Steve Slam, bring it on. Thank you. All right, Steve, did you get that out of your system? It'll never happen again. I'm the best. So we left off with Jesus and he's meeting some disciples, but now Jesus is heading into a town where he's gonna run into some off people. In fact, not just some off people, but people who are seen as the worst of the worst in the community, like Steve. They run some bad people that were tax collectors. Now back then, the tax collectors, they really were seen as the worst of the worst. They were seen as people who cheated and lied and stole from people, like Steve. And no one really liked him. In fact, most of the people around the city stayed away from them because they were seen as the bad guys. But Jesus walks into the city and Jesus sees them a little bit differently. See, Jesus sees these tax collectors and he goes, you know what? I'm hungry. Jesus gets hungry. I know, crazy. And when he gets hungry, he walks up to one of the tax collector's booths and he goes, hey, you tax collector, I'm hungry. First of all, what the heck? Who are you? Second of all, okay. I guess you're the Jesus guy everyone's talking about. So the tax collector invites him to his house for dinner. So Jesus and the people who are with him, they head to the tax collector's house for dinner to eat with the bottom of the barrel, the lowest of the low, the worst of the worst people in the city. Jesus, the son of God, decides to eat dinner with them. You hear that? It's time for more surgery. All right, Steve, I need complete focus. I cannot fail. Do you understand? That, that is focus right there. Let me just, that's, that's how I focus. I'm gonna get this cell phone. Are you happy, Steve? Johnny is suffering still, and you've earned another Steve slam. It's only fair, but listen, last time you went a little too hard, you went a little too crazy. Like, I don't need you to be so tough with it. Ah. Okay, Steve, 
I guess I deserve that. I'm 0 for 2. It's only fair. There will not be an 0 for 3. Here we go. Continuing the story before Johnny has another incident. You need to know about the Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees were a group of religious leaders at the time, and their job was to like make sure people were being good at the religion, like make sure people were being good Jews. And for the most part, they did a good job at it. But they had a lot of rules that weren't actually rules from the Bible. You see, the Pharisees, they got a little bit out of control making rules. And overall, people listened to the Pharisees. They respected them. They thought that they were, generally speaking, smart people. Not really like my assistant, Steve. And so what happened was the Pharisees walk into this dinner where Jesus is sitting with these tax collectors and sinners and just generally bad people. And the Pharisees go, um, excuse me, these are the bad people. Why would someone who claimed they were the son of God sit and eat with these sinners, with these horrible people? And that's where Jesus says something really cool. You see, Jesus said, Johnny's in trouble again. We need immediate action. Now, I'm going in for the fart bubbles this time. Oh, are those, are those ducks? Stop! I haven't been attacked by ducks before. Stop! Ow! I did it! I got it! Take that, Steve! I successfully extracted the fart bubbles. I told you I'm the best. One for three, let's go. Now that I've successfully healed Johnny one out of three times, we gotta tell more about the story. You see, Jesus, when the Pharisees tell him, hey, this isn't cool, you're eating with sinners and bad people, Jesus says, why would I come for the people who don't need me? Why would I come for the people who don't ever sin, who are perfect all the time? And Jesus actually said, does a doctor help the healthy? Or does a doctor come for the sick people? See, that's what's so cool about what Jesus came for. He came to help people who needed help. People like Johnny with scoop a dop a dop a dupilis. But like, not medical issues, but heart issues, sin issues, things in their life that they weren't living well. And so Jesus tells these Pharisees, I came here to be with the tax collectors and the sinners and the unloved. I came here to help them. And that's really good news for you and me, and even Steve, honestly. Because whether you think you're a good kid, a bad kid, an average kid, great at school, terrible at school, first picked on the basketball team, last picked on the pickleball team, whatever it may be, we're all sinners. Yes, e even me, even though I saved Johnny's life one out of three times, we all need Jesus. And Jesus came specifically to help us, the sinners, the people who are sick and need a doctor. Jesus is that doctor. Look, the bottom line is, before we get to that bottom line, I need one more crucial save for Johnny from a scoop a dop a dop a doop a dop a dop a deep a dop a doop a diz. Here we go. Oh! Stop! Are those, are those my shoes? Stop it! It's, it's horrible! I can't. Thanks a lot, Steve. Just. Thanks a lot, Steve. Jo Thanks a lot, Steve. Johnny did not pull through from his scuba dapa dupa dapa deepa dapa dupa this. Are you happy? Look at him. He's horrible. <sighs> Listen, even if you're Steve, Jesus is for everyone. And Jesus came to heal the sick, to be with the sinners, because Jesus is for everyone. Whether you've sinned one time, a million times, or as many times as Steve, Jesus is for everyone. Steve, you're fired. No. <sighs> Finally. All right, see you next week. Stop, cut! <laughs>